In this video, I want to explain what is meant by a sufficient statistic. And a sufficient statistic is a sample quantity, a sample statistic. So that's just, you know, some calculation done on your sample that conveys exactly the same information about the data generating process that created that data as actually the, the entire data itself. So let's just call that X. So in other words, once we know this summary statistic, which I'm gonna call here T of X, it's some function of X, our sample, then the idea is our inferences are the same as those that would be obtained when we condition on our entire sample. So in other words, P of theta, some sort of parameter vector theta, given T of X is equal to P of theta given X itself. So why is this useful? Well, the idea is that if we have a particularly large data sample, then essentially a lot of that information is redundant. And so long as we knew the sufficient statistic for that sample, then we could sort of forget about all of this big data or sample and just focus on the summary statistic. And the example that I'm gonna to use to describe what is meant by a sufficient statistic is the example of flipping a coin. So we're gonna imagine there is some data generating process which we're gonna assume is that which is usually used to represent flipping a coin, which is a Bernoulli distribution which has got one parameter theta, which in this case, I'm going to say represents the probability of the coin landing heads up. And so xi here, which represents our result of our, our coin flip, it's a random variable, is either zero if the coin lands tails up or one if it lands heads up. And so our data that we obtain here is just going to be a long list of ones if the coin lands heads up or zero if it lands tails up. And so now we can go ahead and calculate the likelihood. The likelihood is just, if we're assuming independence between the flips of the coin, it's the product from i equals one to n, where n is our sample size, of theta to the power xi times one minus theta to the power one minus xi. That's just the Bernoulli PMF. So writing this out in full, we just get theta to the power x1 times one minus theta to the power one minus x1 times theta to the power x2 times one minus theta to the power one minus x2, etc. So then if we do that, we just get theta to the power, where we're gonna have x1 plus x2 because like exponents, the powers are just gonna add. And then we're gonna get x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn. And then we're gonna get one minus theta to the power one minus x1 plus one minus x2, etc plus you know, one minus x3 all the way up to one minus xn. So we can rewrite this just as theta to the power, the sum from i equals one to n of xi times one minus theta to the power n minus the sum from i equals one to n of the sum of xi. Oh, sorry, I think I've probably said that twice. It's n minus the sum from i equals one to n of xi. So we notice something straight away here, that essentially our likelihood depends on this quantity, this sum from i equals one to xi, and the data only enters our likelihood in this particular form. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us if we know this summary statistic, which I'm gonna call t of x, which is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of xi, then essentially, we know everything that is useful from our sample to be able to do inference. And so T of X is a sufficient statistic. If we wanted to, we could sort of go one step further and we could say, well, what about the inferences that we obtain? So we could form the log likelihood. So the log likelihood, which is just equal to T times log of theta minus N minus T times log of one minus theta. And then if we go through and we differentiate dl over d theta, then obviously because we don't have x here, we just have t's, we're gonna get 
a first derivative that just depends on t, theta, and n. So when we set this equal to zero, we get out an inference, theta hat, our estimated or maximum likelihood estimate of theta is just equal to t over n if you work through the calculation, which is just the sample mean. So in other words, if we know the sum of our x and we know n, then that is all we need to be able to do inference here. Knowing the exact order of ones and zeros doesn't matter because we're assuming that the probability of heads is constant throughout all of our throws and that they're independent, so we don't get actually any extra information from knowing this long sequence here. So in summary, a sufficient statistic is a function of your sample, some sample statistic in other words, that conveys exactly as much information about the data generating process, in this case, our parameter theta, as does the entire sample.